Yeah. Wow. So, so just a question. So in, instead of people thinking that butter or bacon is going to cause them to get a heart attack, you're saying that inhaling smoke like wood fire is actually going to cause a heart attack. Yes, can do. Yeah. Well, that's like people are not going to think about that. They can think what they like, you know. But it's true. Uh, that that's the fact. <clears throat> Once the particles are small enough, they're called nanoparticles. Your lungs are relatively leaky. Things can leak out of your lungs and into your bloodstream. And once they've leaked out of your bloodstream, these particles are quite toxic to your bloodstream, your blood vessels, and they start damaging. So smoking is obviously one way of putting smoke into your lungs. And, and people say, well, how does smoking cause heart disease? You go, well, it raises your cholesterol. No. It raises your blood pressure. No. It doesn't do anything that you can measure. Why is it causing heart disease? And what is it actually, what is actually happening? What is actually happening is the nanoparticles of smoke get into you, out of your lungs, into your bloodstream, go around your body, killing off endothelial cells. That's what happens, all right? That's what happens with wood smoke as well. That's what happens with diesel fumes. Why do you think, you know, that's been found? Diesel fumes are particularly small particles compared to other forms of fuel. That's what causes that. The the miners, coal miners, used to have heart disease. Uh, yeah, of course, their lungs were destroyed, but actually they terrific rates of heart disease. And that's because they were breathing in crap, if you like. So what about lead poisoning and people's, this is another thing I was looking at a paper, which again gets undermarked, is that uh, in, in America they found that, 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 that lead, not poisoning, but high levels of lead in your blood, in your body, caused, and this was going back to 10 years, 250,000 deaths from heart disease every year, more than smoking. And I said, well, how does lead, how does lead do it? I said, well, it's very simple because lead is one of the most damaging things to your endothelium. And they've shown that you can demonstrate it. It strips your glycocalyx down. Cadmium, heavy metals, terribly damaging. You know, they used to put lead in petrol. OMG. And they said it was perfectly healthy. Yeah. And lead pipes and all the. Now that these are going, this is one of the reasons why heart disease rates are going down, have gone down in the Western world. And you can look at, say, cocaine. I looked at one which was weird. The, the single, the disease that causes the highest increased rate of heart disease, death, ASCVD death, is sickle cell disease. Right. Well, how can sickle cells cause heart disease? Well, a sickle cell is kind of that shape with sharp pointy ends rather than a nice round donut shape, normal red blood cell. Well, can you imagine a sharp pointy red blood cells hammering through your blood system, that's going to be stripping your endothelium apart. And it does. The increased rate of heart disease, I mean, children used to die very young from severe sickle cell disease. The average age of death was two. So obviously they weren't dying of heart disease at that time because they just weren't. But now that they've treated, that you can be treated and get transfusions and things, that they live, they live a lot longer, thank goodness. Um, but they still the rate of heart disease is astronomical. And people just look at it and go, oh, why is that? And instead of saying, this this is a 50,000% increase in the risk of heart disease at that age, these ages. 50,000%. You're looking into the heart of the matter at this point. You can't explain it any other way. They don't have any other risk factors that you can identify, and yet their risk is 50,000%. So that's telling you, it's like, that is shouting at you what the cause of heart disease is. It's screaming at you. It's going, it can't be anything else. This is it. You found the answer. And in fact, the people who authored this paper said it themselves. They said the reason this is happening is because of the physical rigidity of the sickle cells causing damage to the lining of the blood vessels. They said it. But they didn't then follow that on and go, Oh, well, maybe that's what causes heart disease then, isn't it? You go, yes, it is, because it's so blindingly obvious. It, it, it's, 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 people are going, okay, again, explain it. You explain it. Go on. They don't, they just go, oh, well, it's, there's not very many people with sickle cell. I know it's probably different. And it's, uh, so let me try to summarize what you've mentioned. So it's not cholesterol causing heart disease and heart attacks. It's anything that's damaging the endothelial, the endothelial cells, which is the lining of your arteries. And on top of that, you have the glycocalyx. And there's numerous things that we could mention, but anything. And uh, Dr. Eric Berg um, said, 
anything they tell you to do, do the complete opposite because it's probably good for you. So in this sense, eat more saturated fat, eat more whole foods, walk, do high intensity exercise, get out in the sunshine, do some fasting and stay away from all the rubbish, pollution, crap, smoking, all the other stuff. So, and it may, kind of makes sense, but I think that is, if we can understand that is actually the cause of heart disease and heart attacks, not the cholesterol. 